Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So I made a video about six months ago. Doesn't seem like that long ago, but in the world of, I guess, technology and AI in particular, a lot has changed in th those six months since I made that video. So back then I was just talking about making uh, these backdrops using text prompts in a AI program like Midjourney. There are a couple more out there now. I'm going to focus on Midjourney still today. And then using Photoshop and combining studio, the studio photography with those backdrops that are created from nothing, <laughs> basically. And then creating a whole new piece uh, of, I guess it would probably be like photographic art, I guess, uh, if you want to get technical about it. But a lot has changed on the AI front and the Photoshop front since I did that video. And I thought we would revisit today and take a look at what's changed and what we can do now and basically how much easier it is. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned because we're going to get right into it. All right, so for the first part of this, I thought we would jump into the mid-journey section uh, and then the Photoshop. So mid-journey is where you can create these backdrops just by using text prompts. I'm not going to do a you know, deep dive on uh, mid-journey in this video. There's plenty of that information out there. And then I made some previous videos as well about uh, mid-journey where I might cover a little bit more. But then today I thought I would focus on a couple of I guess, tips and tricks that maybe give you a head start in this software uh, where you can kind of figure out how these text prompts work with uh, the specific images that you can pull up or try to pull up. Uh, so let's just jump right into it right now. I'm going to hit record. And then right here you'll see is, is basically the Midjourney website. And let me state too that uh, Midjourney is not free. Uh, it is a subscription just like uh, Adobe Photoshop is. And I guess you'll have to see if it's something that you feel like you're going to use a good bit to justify whatever subscription rate that you want to go for on uh, a service like Midjourney here. But once you go onto the website, uh, you can see this Explore tab. And this is where you can check out other images that people have created uh, in this software. And it gives you their prompts right here uh, on these images. So if you see something that you find interesting, you can go down here and see exactly what was typed in to create these images. And this is a great way to kind of give you that, um, I guess, peek behind the curtain of what words and phrases and all that kind of stuff and how that then relates to the image creation on the Midjourney side. And in, including these images, you've also got a search prompts uh, little section right here where you can type in certain prompts that you might, uh, or that you want to research. So in this case, we're looking at sports backgrounds like stadiums and stuff like that. So I went ahead and typed in uh, American football player running in a stadium. And you can see the images that other people have already created using a similar style prompt. And all you have to do is scroll over these images and you can get exactly what these folks typed in uh, in order to achieve these results. And we can scroll down here and find certain images that might exactly replicate kind of what we're looking to do. Uh, like here's a neat one with the stadium behind them. So and then we can click on this and get a bigger view. And his hand's a little wacky here. And you'll see some of this stuff <laughs> in these image generations. Uh, but what this also does is gives us even more images to kind of deep dive into and more prompts and then you can what you can do is is either copy and paste these prompts right away or you can just kind of maybe take notes uh, and figure out you know like I said this is kind of like a way to give you a head start and then you can take these over to the discord server uh, where it is that you interact with Midjourney and these are some examples that I came up with just for the purposes of this video and you can see where I've typed in a photo portrait of a basketball player in an arena during a game. And we've got four different versions right here. And I've found when I type in portrait, it gives me uh, usually tighter images. So for reasons, I guess, for uh, creating backdrops like we're looking to do, we usually want a little more room. And then that's where you can go with like a full body portrait. And you can see here some of these outputs uh, and then back here. Uh, I went back to uh, another portrait, just, you know, 
trying to see if I can detect a pattern, and this is kind of where I've determined where when you type in uh, photo portrait, you're getting some tighter images. Uh, and then you got waist up and you can do like mid body and you can, like I said, you can go back and look at those other prompts that people have used and see what their outputs are. And that'll give you a good idea of kind of where to go to get the images that you're looking to get. And then let me show you, I'm going to scroll down here. These are the settings I'm using. I just pulled this up for y'all. Uh, I'm using the latest model, which is 5.2. Uh, there's some rumors that uh, mid journey is going to be coming out with a version six here soon, <laughs> which, uh, it's amazing just how far this has come in the last couple months. And I can only imagine what a version six will do. But I did want to show uh, some of uh, the more recent updates that they provided for us. And one of the main ones is this these upscale versions here. So uh, you can see once you upsize one of the uh, versions of an image. So I outputted these four here and then I upsize number four down here. Once you get this on its own, then it gives you the option to upscale it two times or four times. So the original files in Midjourney were not that big. They're uh, 1024 pixels by 1024 on average. And with the upscale, the two times upscale, uh, you can get them up to 2048. And then the upscale, you know, uh, 4096 or in that kind of neighborhood, depending on your aspect ratio. So another you know, huge advancement. And in speaking though of that huge advancement, some of these renderings uh, in Midjourney, they're gonna have some flaws and visual flaws, like something weird maybe in the face. So when you upsize those, uh, they will upsize those flaws. But in our case, where we're looking at these stadium backdrops, which are gonna be generally soft focus, somewhat blurred, uh, those uh, flaws, visual flaws, are pretty much hidden in, in most cases. So. Uh, for the purpose that we're using this for, this is a really nice addition. So now that we've kind of given you a brief overview of Midjourney here, let's jump over to Photoshop. And I'm going to show you, uh, this is a Midjourney image that I outputted. And if it doesn't come across, I'll, I'll put it on the screen here, the prompt, the exact prompt I use. But it's uh, a photo of a single American football player running. Uh, it might have had like in a stadium, but I'll, I'll put that there. So you can see the output here and I've got it. I used a 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio to give me a wide field of view here. Uh, and he's basically isolated uh, in this image. And then let me speak to, <laughs> uh, to uh, different things you can do with Midjourney. You can use Midjourney to output images for mood boards that you can then take to uh, your photo shoots and basically recreate certain images. I'll go back and, and show you. So, uh, you know, if you wanted like a, a picture of, you know, a player, the back of his jersey, you know, looking in an arena, you know, you could have your subject turn at this angle and basically recreate what Midjourney is giving you uh, as a mood board. And you obviously, if you you know, save this file to a laptop or an iPad or, or whatever it is that you show your mood boards to your subjects. Uh, you can you know, direct them, show them these, and, and obviously you can output multiple different ones uh, for you know, different types of images that you want to get. So this, this could be a really neat tool uh, for mood boards. And then secondly, uh, one of the toughest parts of creating composites back in the day was just figure out the composition of where to you know, place your subject in relation to your background. And if you get an output like this in Midjourney, um, obviously this is you know, created for, from nothing uh, and it looks pretty good, I would probably zoom in a little bit on this one. So if we come in, you know, something like this, kind of take the feet out of, out of the image, which simplifies things in the composite world. Uh, but this looks you know, really nice. And this is basically what I used when I created the thumbnail that you saw for this video and I'm gonna show you right now. So this, let me turn the mask off. So this is an image that I did earlier uh, this year with the football team here. And the one that I just pulled to use for uh, this video. And you can see when I stuck him in here, I basically overlaid him uh, closely to where uh, the player that Midjourney created, um, just overlaid him there. I kind of centered him on this light uh, bank um, here, but then Midjourney kind of gave me the scaling that I'm using here. So I, I kind of know uh, what size to make um, my player here in relation to the background. So I'm just using basically what, Mid, what Midjourney is giving me uh, to create uh, or giving me a, like a starting point for this composite. So let's take this off. I'm gonna run through just real quick how 
I created uh, that image that you saw on the thumbnail. And the first thing that we want to do is get rid of our player. So in one of my, in my previous video that I did uh, <laughs> six months ago, uh, and I was having a hard time getting these stadium backdrops without a player, and I still am having a hard time doing it. So uh, basically I create uh, these with the prompt that a player is on the field and it gives me that backdrop. But previously uh, we didn't have generative fill and I was using a, uh, an older tool in Photoshop called Content Aware Fill. And that would only get me so far and then I was having to use the clone stamp tool to correct some of the uh, imperfections in using that a content aware fill. But now we've got generative fill in Photoshop and it is really amazing uh, what it can do. So all we have to do is create a selection around our subject. We don't want to do uh, the select subject because we want to leave some room between what it is that we're wanting to fill and the background so Photoshop will have something to pull from when it creates the, the fill here and uh, taking out our player. And I'm just using the trackpad with one hand um, here to make this selection so you can, can, you can see uh, just this roughly done selection here. I'm gonna click generative fill. I'm not gonna put anything in there and hit generate. And this is gonna tell Photoshop to basically fill, take this player out and fill in the stadium behind him. And it'll give us three options so there we go. <laughs> Three perfectly usable options uh, to, to complete the composite. You can see where Photoshop actually added like a uh, exit row there. Something kind of white. I'm going to, and then we gotta remember we're gonna stick our player like right over this anyway. So it's, uh, it's pretty good right from start. I'm gonna use number three here. And let's put our player. So this is the, the mask. And I just did a quick uh, select subject mask on uh, our player. And so then what I like to do is use another AI filter within Photoshop and it's in the neural filter section. And I used this in my previous video and this is called harmonization. And I'm gonna hover over this and you can see exactly what it says. Uh, harmonize the color and luminosity of one layer to another layer to make a flawless <laughs> composite. And you'll see it, it gives you kind of a starting point but uh, it'll, we'll kind of dial in a little bit more of what, after what it gives us. So I'm already on the layer with the player, so I'm gonna select this layer to pull the colors from. And you'll see here, it's brought up the color of his jersey. We're gonna output to a new layer. And you can see what it did there. In this case, it, it changed the color and a little bit of contrast on his legs here. Uh, but then what that's done is, is take the color away from kind of what the actual jersey color is for uh, this team. So then what I'm going to do is probably come in here and adjust this hue and saturation just a little bit. Bring that down. And this is bringing down the whole saturation of the whole scene. And the, But then that, that takes that red down a little bit and brings us closer to uh, what it is that you know, what, what that jersey normally looks like. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do here too is do just like a little color balance, give us, put a little cyan in the shadows, maybe a little bit of blue. And in the highlights, I'm gonna warm the highlights just a touch. And so these two, I'm just gonna complete a group. So you can kind of see where I've adjusted that a little bit further. And obviously I'm trying to do this as quick as possible on, uh, for this, the sake of this video, full disclosure, I did this earlier and it was like 20 plus minutes and I'm trying to do this a lot quicker. Uh, but so zooming in, I mean, I feel like this is a really, you know, really neat image. And I would probably bring this color, I'll probably tweak these colors a little bit more. I did one earlier and this is kind of what I came up with here, uh, which I feel like is blended a little bit better. Uh, but you know you can spend as much time as you want on these and everything is obviously tweakable But that is really how uh, Fast uh, I was able to to pretty much put this together. So let's jump and I'll show you one more Sample and and this will kind of show a little more of what we can do with the generative fill uh, on the Photoshop end of things so What I've got here Let me take this down. So what I've got here is the output from 
Mid Journey, and it's a photo portrait of an NBA player on a court during a game is, is what I uh, feel like that the rest of that prompt is. And you can see I've got, uh, you know, a really nice and a 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio, a lot of background to work with. What I came across, though, is the image I wanted to drop in is this image here. And her arm, I liked just the size of her like this, and her arm was a little bit too tall uh, for you know what what I outputted in mid journey so then what I was able to do after I generated him or I filled him out of the the backdrop and then what I did is increase the size of the uh the canvas and then I'll show you real quick and then you just make a selection uh, over that area that you want to fill and then you just hit generate fill and it did exactly what I was asking it to and then there was another step here where I wasn't a big fan of this big this solo big light and so then I made a selection I'll show you right here I made a selection of here and then hit general fill and then I added in arena lights there and so it gave me the string of lights uh, that really looked a lot better I feel than what it was before that's before and then that's after the arena lights that I put in in Photoshop and then I dropped my player in. I did uh, a neural filter on her. And then I added, uh, like I did in that other one, I did a little, a little color balance, uh, did a little curves adjustment, and then another curves adjustment. I'll just show you these. So I, I brought her down just a little bit, exposure-wise, uh, on both of these. Um, brought the, the basketball down right there and put in some shadowing on one side of her. And then I added a little bit of a flare over her arm, kind of brings in this smoke a little bit more. And then added like a blue soft light layer over the top. And that kind of gives an overall kind of color uh, cast on this image. And uh, I think, I feel like that kind of brings it all together. But once again, that was basically the same process that I used in the uh, image before. It's just really neat to have uh, a tool like Midjourney at, at our disposal where we can create these unique backdrops without actually having to go to them and photograph them uh, or go online and pull stock images, uh, that type of thing. So it's uh, such a, a neat creative tool uh, that I feel like you know the only limit is our imagination when it comes to uh, putting these types of images together. So I'm hoping that this shows y'all some of the possibilities uh, at this point in time uh, where the technology is and who knows where it's gonna be in another six months. Uh, it's just incredible where it's come in the last six months. They were just tools that I just used right now that were not available uh, six months ago. So it's pretty exciting. Um, if you ask me, I feel like it's worth it to kind of uh, be in this, in, you know, kind of educating yourself with this type of stuff, even though it does uh, cost a little bit of money. And, but I just, you know, in some aspects, I feel like it's, it's more important to kind of be on the cutting edge of this type of thing and not, uh, I guess, holding yourself back when it comes to certain tools that are available for everyone out there now. So if you feel like this video was uh, worthy, please give it that thumbs up. And you want to see more content like this. Hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it so YouTube will actually let you know when I'm here. In the meantime, y'all can follow me on social media, on Instagram at Quants Photo, and on uh, X at Quants Photo, as well as ProLight Mods on Instagram. Y'all stay safe and healthy out there, and I will see y'all again soon in the next one.